Thank you for tuning in to this 41st episode of Heart to Heart. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always, of course, the hour for revival. But I'm glad you could tune in to the program of Heart to Heart today. This is going to be not a preaching, but a teaching of the Word of God today. Amen. And I'm going to be talking about, ironically, doors that God either will close or open. And there's, in the past 24 hours, been a few doors that the Lord has allowed to shut. But I know when he shuts a door, he opens a window. Amen. Glory to God. Just read Malachi chapter 3 and 10 for that one. He opens a window. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Before I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for the day. I thank you for another chance to preach your word and to live it out before your people, Father God, and before you. Lord, I pray that you would anoint the people to hear your word, for your word is already anointed. Lord, we cast upon the bread upon the water, and we expect it to come back as gold. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. So if you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Zephaniah, the second chapter, hallelujah, verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness, it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. That's where I want to start today. That they may be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. That's what I want to talk about today, being hid in the presence of God. There was an old Dottie Rambo song that she wrote, and God bless her. I know it, it will outlive her for eternity on this side of heaven. Hallelujah. It's called Sheltered in the Arms of God. One of my favorite gospel songs, and I think I just found out what I want Sister White to sing for Wednesday. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Sister Angel, God bless you. I love you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. But it said for them to seek the Lord. And he also said that they may be hid from the anger of God in that coming time. Amen? The Lord is a just God. There's a lot of people that get this idea of God's grace that they can go ahead and do anything they want to and have a relationship with God. But let me explain something to you, my friends. A relationship don't work like that. It's not take and take and take and take. It's give and give. You give to one in your relationship and that other one gives to you. It's give and give, not give and take. Amen. Glory to God. That's why a lot of marriages end in divorce. Because they take, 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 take instead of give. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody say that's good preaching. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord. But I want you to go further with me now. God has a plan to keep us safe and sheltered even in his day of anger. Can I prove that? Absolutely. Remember the book of Noah? The story of Noah? The story of Noah says that the Lord was angry because of the sin that had populated the earth and had flooded the earth with so much corruption from the fallen angels. And God said, I'm going to destroy the world. And I'm going to start all over with just, just you, Noah, and your family. And when the Lord told Noah that, Noah 
found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's what the Bible said. He was a righteous man, a man who hated sin, hated iniquity. There's always a remnant in every generation. I don't care where you go in the world. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care where you go in this world. There's always going to be a remnant found in every generation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God sent a flood, but before he sent a flood, he sent a refuge. Mm, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Before God allowed the flood, he allowed a refuge. He allowed the ark to be built. And the Bible said that as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be before the Lord returns. Even in the days of Lot, Lot is mentioned right before the Lord's coming. Well, do you remember that Lot, God gave grace to Lot and to his wife and to his daughters, and they were brought out of Sodom and Gomorrah before destruction and judgment came upon the earth. They were brought out. God has a rescue plan for those that belong to him. Are you hearing what I'm preaching today? Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you something. He always gives warning concerning a day of trouble, but concerning the day he's going to send judgment, he always gives a warning. Why? Because his ambassadors are in the land. The ambassadors go out into a nation or into a country of a foreign land, and we are travelers from a foreign land on our way back home. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we are on our way, he is, we are on our way home to be with the Lord. And look at this, y'all. This world is not our home. And before judgment and sudden destruction comes upon the world, he's sending out warning. He's sending out a pending judgment. It's a red flag. It's the alarm is being sounded out. Repent, get ready. The rapture is about to take place because what happens when he catches away the saints, when the elect are called out, when the ambassadors are called out, what is going I feel the Holy Ghost coming on me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. What's going to happen? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25 verse 10, those that were ready for the consummation of the kingdom, those that was ready for the wedding actually closed the door. God closed the door and the world was shut out. Amen. The world was shut out. And the saints went in for the consummation of the kingdom. They, God shut the door. Just like he did on the ark. God shut the door. Well, honey, let me tell you something. When God's hand holds that door closed, you ain't never going to pry it open. There's a lot of people that find themselves in a situation where they find themselves fighting against God. Well, you know what's going to happen? They're going to try to beat and bang and try to rip the door apart, but God's hand is against the door. God said, mm -mm, you ain't getting in here. God's hand is against the door. I shut doors and no man can open, he said. Why? Because his hand is against it. God's hand, anything with the hand of God on it is a restraining force. The hand of God is a restrainer. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost on me now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Listen to this, y'all. Concerning the day of trouble, Jeanette, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you something. 
concerning the day of trouble, God always gives his children that are following him a chance to duck their head and hit their knees. Come on now. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Isaiah 26 and 20, he said, my people go in and shut the door behind you until the indignation of the Lord be passed, until the anger of the Lord be passed past. Shut the door and lock it. Don't let anybody else in. Just you and God get into a secluded place and pray there's a storm coming. But let me tell you something. Even for America the judgment of God is about to hit America. And let me tell you something. The ones that are going to be affected first are the pastors and the preachers that say one thing and live another. God is going to hit with a storm, but let me tell you something. Those that belong to the king shall remain. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The sacredest place I'll get back to you in a minute, Jacob. Praise the Lord. Actually, I can prove to you the rapture without using the word rapture, okay? Because obviously you're stuck on that word, but it's actually found in the Bible, okay? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because let me tell you something. You're saying there, there ain't going to be a rapture. Let me tell you, he talks about the catching away of the saints. He talks about the word rapture means to rapizo to be snatched out quickly with great force. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. So yes, there will be a rapture, my friend. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. He is coming again and coming very soon. He will come like a thief in the night. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But let me go ahead and go back into this. The sacredest place to be with God is behind the door. Jesus even said, when you pray, go into your prayer closet and shut the door behind you. Pray to your Father who is in secret, and he will reward you openly, my friends. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's right, sister. The judgment of God starts in the house of God. Brody, God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Like I said, the sacredest place and the safest place to be is behind the door of deliverance. Who is the door? John 10, 7. Jesus said, I am the door. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Where is the door seated in heavenly places? Revelation 4, 1, I saw a door standing open in heaven. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me tell you something. And the voice that spoke with me said, come up hither. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the door, and he is the door to heaven. The only way you're getting to heaven is through the Son. Because if you remember, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, the rabbis teach that there was a process that the people had to go through to get behind the veil with God, and it was called the way, the outer court, the inner court, the truth, and the holy of holies was called the life. So when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he was declaring, I'm the one you're practicing to meet. I, you know, the religious dogmas and practices of their days was leading them onward to the time when they would meet the king. He said, I'm every bit of what you've been looking for. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to cleanse you. I'll set you free. And I'll do, mm, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. When we get married to God, he does three things at the altar. One, he'll meet us there. Two, he'll bless us. And three, he'll give us his name, just like at a, a human marriage. Amen. A heavenly marriage, God does the same thing. He meets us at the altar. 
He blesses us and he gives us his name. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody needs to shout, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, though, in Ephesians chapter 2, we are seated with the door. We are seated with God in heavenly places. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus for the Lord to give favor and strength to the family. In the name of Jesus, I stand in complete agreement with you that nothing bad will happen and that everything will work out for the glory of God that shall keep those children in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, let me go a little further. Do you know... The wisest place to prophesy ain't outside the door. <laughs> it's within the door. See, the Bible says that the prophet wouldn't come to the door to prophesy. Because let me tell you something. The king's man that sent was sent to the prophet Elisha, he knew what the Lord done told him was going to happen. He, The man was going to get the prophecy, then kill Elisha. But Elisha prophesied from behind the door. 2 Kings 6 and 32, he would not come out the door. He said, I'm going to prophesy right here from behind the door. I ain't moving. I ain't getting out for nobody. I ain't looking for no glory except to give God glory. I ain't looking for none of my own glory. So I'm going to stand behind the door because behind the door is protection. Outside the door is death. Why do you think they put the blood on the doorpost and went inside and hid with the blood as their protection? Come on, somebody. I could preach all day on this. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Woo! The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into him and are saved. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He prophesied behind the door, 2 Kings 6 and 32. Behind the door is the place of refuge, just like the Bible says, concerning our Savior, Proverbs 18 and 10. Hallelujah. And verse 30, he is a refuge for all who take, he is a safe haven for all who take refuge in him. Revelation, uh, Proverbs 18, 10, and Proverbs 18 and 30. Psalms 9, 1 through 10. He is our safe haven. There is a secret place in God that we can go. Amen. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now watch this. The only door God needs you and I to open for him is the door of our heart because God is a perfect gentleman and he will never interfere with free will. He'll never interfere with it. So when it comes to the door of our heart, God, revelation, Chapter 3 and 20 says, not, not, not. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man comes to me, if any man hears my voice and will open the door, I will come into him and dine with him and him with me. He won't force himself on nobody, but he gives you the invitation to open him the door of your heart so he can come and dine with you, my friends. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Other doors open and shut in our lives, but one door that we've got control over is our heart door. 
Swing wide, ye heavenly shanda da da bosa. Swing wide, you heavenly gates, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, mighty in battle. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, Jesus. God wants to show himself strong in you and mighty in your life. Revelation 3, 7 through 8. God said, I open doors that no man can shut, and I shut doors that no man can open. But let me tell you something, my friends. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just like it was in the days of Noah, God is about to show shut the door. Genesis 7, 13 through 16. Luke 13 and 25. They're going to run up and say, Lord, Lord, open to us the door. But he'll say, I'm sorry, I don't know you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So many people are one day going to soon find, soon they're going to find, like in Revelation, I believe it's the 14th chapter, it says that the door of heaven was shut. The door of the temple in heaven was shut and nobody could get in to minister or out until the judgment of God had passed. That's in the book of Revelation right at the end. There's coming a time where God will not even hear the prayers of anybody until his judgment has passed. Are you hearing me? We're approaching that day very cautiously. We are approaching quickly the judgment of God where the door of the temple in heaven will be shut and the smoke of incense won't be seen and it won't be smelt in the nostrils of God for that moment in time but you got time to get in the ark you got time to get into the wedding supper right now. If you're watching this video, it's not too late. God says you can still come in and sit at the table and dine with him. If you want me to pray with you right now, if you want to know the King of glory, pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit, that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want you to know, and if you're watching this video today and the Lord has shut some doors in your life, don't try to get them doors back open. Just praise him in the hallway till he opens another one, or at least till he opens a window. Amen. Praise him, even though he hadn't done nothing yet except close the door. Praise him that that door is closed because that door may have led you to destruction. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. What a wonderful service this was. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. 41st installment of Heart to Heart. I am so amazed at what God has done. There has been so many people tune in today for this broadcast or podcast or whatever you want to call it, cast. Just cast it out. There you go. <laughs> I'm just going to cast it out and let you call it what you want to. But I tell you what, I have been blessed to do this broadcast with you. I pray for healing for those that are sick. For those that need deliverance, I pray deliverance in Jesus' name. Father, fill everybody watching with the Holy Ghost and fire today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.